In this video, I'll show you how to paint the light of Eltharion. All right, let's get the light of Eltharion painted. Absolutely fantastic, wonderful model, how this has been put together with uh, no actual person uh, inside. So in terms of what we're going for, we're going for box art. So the first thing I want to do is I want to paint um, paint all the cloak, all the black bits, because it, uh, I've primed it Corax white, and the reason I'm doing the black first is because if there's any mistakes or we run over onto the Corax white, then it's really easy to uh, just fix it with the Corax white out of the pot. So you can see there that the bad and black I'm using is, uh, is quite thin, and it's not covering in one go. That's fine, that's intentional. We want to get a nice, even, thin coverage, and then we'll go back and give it a second coat. And we're going to do all the black like this. So have a look at the box art because we've got the back, the cloak there, we've got the the backs of the greaves there, uh, and we've got the kind of bit around the the loin cloth there as well uh, to do black. So just work your way around the model and get the get everything apart from the armor painted black, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look how we are. If we need to make any uh, repairs, we will do with Corax white. And then we'll highlight it next. So two coats of bad and black. I've got a nice coverage. I've also gone back in with the Corax white uh, base paint from the pot and just kind of touched, touched everything up a little bit. So I want to start highlighting the uh, the cloak uh, on all the black bits now. So the first colour I'm going to use for this is Dark Reaper, and what we're looking for is just where we've got the, the folds. We're just going to paint. This all over those kind of raised areas and when it goes on it might look quite light but actually as it dries it'll blend down into the black we might need to go over it a couple of times just to to get the kind of highlight we want it's just work your way around let it dry before you kind of go in and add in another one they want to do this on all, all the black bits so where we've got the kind of cloak flowing through the front there just want to get it on there as well so work your way around get a nice uh, decent coverage of that uh, of the incubi darkness and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we look to highlight it further so hopefully you can see there the dark reaper and how it's come out so next up we're gonna pop some thunderhawk blue down now this is gonna just be a, a lot thinner than that dark reaper and it's going to pick up kind of more of the edges so we want to just map it down over those most most raised areas and you can start to see that as it dries it kind of blends down and gives us a nice effect without having to work too hard which is always a bonus coming out quite nicely on the, the kind of back of that cape and the other thing we want to do is like all the kind of the black leather where we just need a kind of a sharper edge so just take your time doing this just to kind of get the highlights right and there we are so work your way around the rest of the model just pop that thunderhawk blue in kind of thinly over the ink by darkness we'll come back and do the, the kind of the last highlight on all the black leather next That cloak is coming together really quite nicely now. So the last little highlight we're going to pop on it is just going to be a little bit of Fenrisian grey. Now you want to use this very sparingly because it is much brighter than uh, all the other colours we've already used. So you can see there I'm just those sharpest edges get a nice line of that Fenrisian grey. And that just picks up the highlights very nicely. So you can work your way around then using that Fenrisian grey sparingly because it will brighten up some of the some of the colours on there. And then when we come back, we'll have a, a start on the the kind of uh, 
decoration around the cloak, I guess, is the best term for it. Um, so we can be around, get that done, and we'll come back and we'll move on to the decoration next. Once we're happy with how the cloak and all the other black bits look, let's move on to some of the, the blue decorations. Now I'm going to do this slightly different to the box art, uh, because I'm going to paint all this decoration blue as well. So the colour I'm using is Calador Sky, and for the kind of the bottom of the cloak, this is uh, nice and easy. You can just follow the design around so you don't spill it onto uh, any other areas. I'm also kind of paint these tassels as well with the Calador Sky. So this is one of those times where you just need to be patient, take it easy, enjoy the process because we're starting to add some colour to it now and the model's really starting to come together. So in terms of what we're going to paint blue, we're going to paint kind of the, the inside of the, or the room I should say, in there. We're also going to paint this part here, coming away from... Uh, Eltharion's helmet um, and we've also got some other small pieces so we've got like uh, tassels and bits and bobs coming off the sword here off this kind of tilt plate so work your way around get everything with uh, covered in that Kalador sky and we'll come back and shade it up next once that Kalidor sky is all done, we want to shade it, and the colour I'm going to use for this is uh, Drakenhof Nightshade. So the bits we're going to shade are just the bits that we painted kind of over the white undercoat. So there's uh, and the, and the tassels we're going to paint as well, because we just want to make them uh, look a little darker. So make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, but just paint that Drakenhof Nightshade all over. And kind of set in the recesses there, being careful when you come up against uh, bits you've already finished. So get all the tassels in as well. Again, any bits that you do accidentally go over, we can come back and touch up with some Corax white before we do the armour, uh, which will be the, the last thing we do on this model. So get these tassels done as well. And we'll come back and we'll highlight it all next. The first highlight then is going to be Teclis Blue, which is a nice bright blue. And where we can, uh, we kind of want to follow the design of the plastic on the model. And just work our way around it. Now you see there, it gives us a nice initial highlight. Apologies if you can hear the wind, it is very windy outside. And then what we want to do is where we've got the kind of the raised areas is you want to paint a little bit down there just to kind of highlight it up. When it comes to things like the, the tassels, all we want to do is we want to just just highlight, but we want to try and paint down uh, some of the individual tassels and don't do them all because you you know you'll you'll be here all day. The other thing we want to do as well is where we get the robe and the kind of the blue edges flicking up. We do want to highlight that as well because we'll leave the kind of the darker blue in the recesses, but we'll get that lighter blue captured, uh, which kind of gives it a nice highlight and gives us a nice natural transition. So work your way around. Find all those blue bits that you can. Don't forget the runes. And then we'll come back and we'll give it a give it a final highlight before we uh, before we move on to the gold next. Blue's highlighting up really nicely now, so we'll just give it one last uh, going over. And the colour we're going to use for this is Hoeth Blue. And this is just for those kind of extreme edges, so we don't want to use too much of it. Just gives us a little bit of desaturation on the blue. And I think that's nice and nice and effective on the model. So we're just going for those highest areas using the shape of the model where we can to get a nice kind of precise line. So exactly like we did with the Teclis Blue before, work your way around 
make sure you get this on just the highest parts and then that's pretty much done we'll come back and we'll do the the gold next the first thing we need to do uh, when painting the gold is to uh, base it all with some dryad bark so first off we've got all the kind of the the chain mail is, is gold on Eltharion, so we're going to base that with a dryad bark. Just take your time working it in there to make sure that you've got it all covered and that you're not going over anything that you've uh, already finished. We've also got the kind of tilt in shield here, so we want to get that painted with a dryad bark. Get the all the internal bits done as well. Just being careful not to go over uh, the kind of the Corax white outline. If you do, it's not the end of the world, like we've done with when we're doing the black. Just take the Corax white and paint it back over. Uh, and the other thing we've got is we've got the the dragon crest on Eltharion's helmet as well, as well as kind of the sword hilt. So just take your time, work this dryad bark on. Again, just be as careful as you can because it just, like I say, it's not the end of the world if you do go over some of the white. It just saves time cleaning up later on. So get all this painted and we'll come back and uh, we'll add the gold on next. With all that dryad bark done, it's now time to get some gold on. So the colour we're going to use is Liberator Gold. And we're going to basically paint this over all the dryad bark that uh, we painted. So for the uh, bits of kind of chain mail. We just want to paint it on, but leave that dried bark in the recesses. So you get a nice uh, kind of delineation in there, just like that. Um, and really, this is kind of what you're doing all the way around, is where you've got uh, kind of recesses. You just want to leave the dryad bark in there so just like that for example painting around the shapes and again if you happen to go over the shape with the gold don't worry too much just take some corax white and and touch it back up similarly here on the kind of the, the headdress which is quite you know it's probably the most ornate part on the entire model if you do happen to go over you can just take take the Corax white back over it but the benefit with kind of doing it this way is that you can use the shape of the model to get the the gold on and the dryad bark underneath still gives you that kind of black lining in there so it looks uh, really nice and effective so work your way around the model all the bits that you've just painted gold you want to uh, so with dried bark you want to paint with liberated gold and we'll come back and highlight it a bit next highlighting the gold is uh, uh, like most things uh, really straightforward well how I tried to make them anyway I'm uh, just going to use a little bit of uh, chrome from Vallejo Model Air and we're just going to use the shape of the model to highlight kind of sharpest edges with that chrome and what you'll see then is that, that chrome makes it look just that little bit uh, brighter um, which is kind of the what you see on the kind of the box art and then we're just going to paint the kind of lower half of the chain mail top half of that there and then it's for you to kind of decide when you've, you've done enough gold highlights um, you, know, you don't want to go overboard but you certainly want to give because this is a much lighter gold than perhaps we'd normally do on a model you do want to make sure that you've got those got those highlights sorted so get around there finish off all these highlights and then we'll come back and what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of shading around the top of the helmet and then we'll, uh, I think we'll move on to the armor. So prior to us moving on to the armor, make sure that you've gone over with Corax White and cleaned up any mistakes that you've made. And we'll come back and we'll get that done next. I'm just going to shade up the 
phoenix head on the, the helmet crest a little, just with a little bit of right on flesh shade. Just to give it a little bit of a a different look and because it's got lots of different reflections coming off it. So again, you can see I'm not using very much Reichland Flesh Shade, I'm not letting it pool. I'm just popping it in there just to give a little bit of bit of interest. Just maybe pop a little in there. And then we have that happy day. So like I said, go back with that Corex White to make sure that you've got all um, the armor, the feathers, etc. back to white and then we'll come back and I think we'll make a start on the armor next. So for the armor, like I said, make sure you've taken it all back to white. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the whole thing with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. Now, what you should be able to notice from the way I'm applying this is that I've not saturated the model with the contrast paint. I've got very little paint on my brush, which makes this possible. Okay, and what you'll find is that as the contrast paint dries, it'll naturally pull towards the edges of the model. And if you need to kind of go in and add some extra definition, then you can. So work your way around the entirety of the model, get the Scout and Horde contrast paint in. If you think you've put too much in, like perhaps I have there, then you can just wick it away using your brush. And then we'll come back and we'll highlight the armor next. Once all that skeleton hoard's gone in, like you can see there, I've not put it on too thick, I've not drowned the model. We want to highlight everything up. So to do that, we're going to use some white scar. Um, and where we can, what we're going to do is we're going to just use the shape of the model to just pull our brush along. It's a nice and easy way of getting some nice consistent highlights. Try to find the best place to show you how to do that. So I'll show you on this arm here. So just moving the brush and flicking it kind of over these uh, lines and the designs in the armor. Uh, essentially you just want to work your way around the entirety of the model like this. Where you get to the hands you may have to sort of paint on your own highlight like that. Just following the edge. You know, I'm not doing anything there that's magic. It's literally just following along with the parts of the model that kind of jump out. Just getting that highlight. So like I said, really straightforward. You just want to work your way all the way around the model making sure that you're getting the model to work for you rather than you working for the model just like that so get all that done we'll come back and we'll see how bright eltharion is looking and then we'll move on to the ether quartz crystals that he's got the feathers and the swords so unfortunately the video didn't record uh, what I was doing with the uh, with the gems. But all I've done is just put a little bit of Magos purple over the gem and into the crystal uh, in the sword there. Um, it doesn't matter too much if you uh, spill over a little bit. But what we will do, we'll just go in and just highlight that a little with some white scar. Just on the sharp edges. And then similarly on the crystal or the gem at the top we'll just highlight that top edge to give a nice uh, powerful reflection okay and next up we'll have a look at the uh, the feathers on the head so the feathers on the head are pretty straightforward now what we're going to do is we want to take some ethematic blue contrast paint and we just want to paint it around the kind of bottom like just like that then what we want to do is we want to clean the brush off we want to just make sure the brush is dry. We just want to pull that ethematic blue out a little bit. So what it does, it just leaves uh, a little bit of a residual there like that. And it kind of blends out. Okay. So we want to do that on both sides, front, back, left, right, as well as the kind of the Phoenix uh, ornament on his helmet. And then we'll come back and highlight it next. 
highlighting the headdress is really straightforward as well. Make sure that automatic blue is dry and then we're just going to take some uh, white scar. We're just going to highlight the kind of most raised areas. And it's nice and straightforward. Leaves that ethematic blue in the kind of in the recesses. Gives it a nice kind of glow, just like that. And then for the kind of gems in the hair, you just paint them with some Liberator Gold, uh, which I'll kind of do off cam. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll do the the swords next. And then the light of Iltharion is done. We need to base the uh, the two blades that Altarian has and for that we're going to use Grey Knight Steel so a nice thin coat of Grey Knight Steel just take your time popping it on and the reason we're using this is Grey Knight Steel has got a really nice kind of bluey sheen to it which will help us get a really nice effect so just work your way through, get the blades covered with the, the Grey Knight steel. Take your time, make sure it's a nice even coverage. And then we'll uh, come back and we'll do a little shading, a little highlighting, and then the Altharian model's done. Once that Grey Knight steel is dry, take some Ethematic Blue and just brush that all over the blade. And that just kind of enhances uh, the blue colour, it also kind of settles in the recesses a little bit. So where we've got that there, we probably got a little bit too much ethematic blue, so just going to brush some of that off to keep the silver shining through. Make sure you do it on the other side as well and let that dry. So next up we're just going to take a little bit more ethematic blue and on this side we're just going to kind of paint it in that kind of top half. And then similarly on the other side, we're just going to paint it in that bottom half, just there like that. Same on this side of the sword, a little bit there, and then towards the end. If it's not quite blending, just clean the brush off and just pull it, pull it until it does, just like that. So let that dry, we highlight it next, and then Altharion is done. The last thing we're going to do is highlight the blades, and we're going to use chrome for this. And this is possibly the easiest part of the entire thing. So all we're going to do is we're just going to follow along the design of the blade, like that, and then we're very carefully going to draw a line down the middle like that. So there we have it, really straightforward, nice and easy, follow the edges and then draw a line down the middle. Eltharion is now done and we'll have a look at him on the on the turntable next. Now when I put him on the turntable his base is going to be done and I get a lot of questions about how I do bases so don't worry I'm going to do that as a separate video it'll probably come out the day after this one uh, so you, you may just have to be a little bit patient as I pull that one together but it'll be this exact base we'll get it done and then we'll get Eltharion on the turntable and uh, hopefully you guys have taken some hints and tips out of this that you can take into your own painting. That is my aim. There we are. Really happy with that. So like I said, we'll see him on the turntable next and I will be doing a separate video for his base. So there we have it. The light of Eltharion is done. He looks absolutely fantastic and he's ready for the tabletop. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help the channel. It really does help me improve the content for you guys as well. Don't forget, you can see links to all my recommended equipment in the description. And you can also get a link for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% off all your wargaming needs. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.